a little rough. Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say you? that I am. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father in heaven. And I say unto, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I wonder, did you hear those promises that were just made? Can I read it again to you? And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want to take a few minutes today talk to you from this thought, the power of a limitless God, the power of a limitless God. Father, now allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Oh, Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. In advance, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The power of a limitless God. On last week, I talked to you from Luke's gospel, the 15th chapter, and familiar scripture concerning the plight of the prodigal son and talked to you also about the fact that we looked at it from the perspective of our own children and especially our adult children who we raised up in the church. And it seems like the enemy of our soul has, has taken aim at them especially. But then we confirmed the situation with the prodigal son. We confirmed it by going to Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, and looking at verse 6. That says, train up a child in the way in which we have them to go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Uh, 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 all, almost a guarantee from God that, listen, whatever you've put in them, if you put the word of God in them, they will not depart from the word of God. Again, if you put the word of God in them, they will not depart from the word of God. For some reason in this present day, you, you really don't see the commitment and loyalty to the church uh, that our forefathers and foremothers exhibited. As a matter of fact, you don't see the dedication or the respect uh, that was shown uh, in the early church and in the early years, and not just by our forefathers and foremothers, but by the church itself. You don't see that like you used to see it. There are so many outside things, so many outside ventures, if you please, that, that is taking the attention, easily drawing away the attention uh, from the church. And the church today has to contend much more than the church of old. I, I will give you the fact that temptation is temptation. Uh, 
but 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 there's so many things that are fighting against. Let's let's uh, let's back it up. There are so many things fighting against the home. There's so much being shown now. There's so much being on the television or or just on social media, if you please, and and uh, things that are contradicting the things that you're trying to teach. Uh, the things that are on TV now would would not even be considered, uh, they were considered uh, triple X and three more X's. And, uh, but now it's, it is basically PG, the things that they're showing now. So, so the times have changed. Hear me real good now. The, the times have changed, but, 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 but our methods, uh, we, we look at our methods of how we do things, the time has changed, but God has not changed. Now, y'all are saying, hey, hey, amen, but, 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 but get it in your spirit now. There, uh, times have changed, and times will continue changing because as one generation goes off the scene, here comes another generation. But I'm concerned about that next generation, as it says in the book of Judges. I'm concerned because it said, when that generation was buried with their fathers, it says another generation arose that knew not God. I'm concerned. Look at somebody say, I'm concerned. I'm, 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 and now, only if you really are. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about the new generation. I'm concerned that, 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 that if they don't know God, what in the world will they do? <laughs> somebody said there are no atheists in a foxhole. At some point in time, all, all, everybody will call the name God. Everybody will, matter of fact, the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I don't care what, you, what, what your thinking is, we have to take a look at this because the church today has to contend with so much more than the church of old. So the church today has to contend with folk within the church being satisfied with how things are. Not willing to change, not, not, not willing to shift. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, but, but, but my Bible tells me that when God moved, Israel moved. I, I, our God is a, is a moving God. And this lets me know that God is just that. God is a moving God. We, we hear so much about this thinking outside the box. And that's a, that's, that's a modern term, and that's a term we all, people have used. I want to think outside the box. And I, I, I wonder what that really means. First of all, what you're doing uh, in the box. But, but, but I want to know what, what, what does it mean, Monet? What, 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 what does it mean to think outside the box? It, it, it has been it has turned some folk off, this, this term, but in this day of ministry, the message stays the same, but we have to rethink our methods. The theme, and when, you, when, when you take a look at this, it's something because I submit to you on this afternoon, if you really take the time to study the steps of Jesus and his ministry, his entire ministry was really based upon thinking outside the box. Jesus was an agent of change. And if I understand the scriptures correctly, station and lack of progress bothered Jesus. As a matter of fact, he kept running into people who had a problem with change, a problem with shifting. And in the ninth chapter of John's gospel, Jesus came across a man who was blind from birth. The Bible says this very quickly. Jesus knelt down, spit on the ground, uh, made some mud and put the mud on the man's eyes and told him to go wash. And when the man came back, uh, came back, he came back seeing and the people questioned the man's new eyes. Questioned the method in which Jesus used. Questioned the man's new eyes because they were still operating from that of old hearts. Well, I'm, 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 I'm talking about taking the Taking the limit off, uh, taking the limit off of God and uh, God that has all power. Je Jesus kept people who had a problem with change. As a matter of fact, it's going to be an, an imperative that this year, somebody say this year, yeah, this year that, that we don't become lazy. 
Don't become comfortable this year. It's, it's going to be important. I know, I know some may think that, well, I had a rough year last year, and I, I'm, I'm kind of going to lay back. This. No, no, you can't afford this year to lay back. There, there's some things coming into your hands. And I heard this as I was driving over to church this morning. And, and the Lord said, I'm going to send some things through your hands this year. But, but you, have to be, you have to be conscious and have a spirit of discernment to know what to hold on to and what to let go of. Somebody put your hands out like this and just open them halfway. This year, somebody say this year. God's going to allow, I feel like preaching a little bit now, God's going to allow something come through your hands and you got to have a discernment as to what to hold on to and what to let go of. Tell somebody, he's talking to me right now. Oh my goodness. Now, this year, somebody shout this year. This year, you got to realize that I got to take the limit off of God. This year, I've got to take the ropes off God. This year, I got to let my faith go where it's never been before. I've got to let my faith go there because this year is when we'll see that generation that will seek him, that will seek thy face, O Jacob, this year. Well, uh, Jesus kept running into people who had a problem with change and and, 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 and it's something be, uh, because the Bible says that the, uh, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. And he says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I, I love reading that scripture because, uh, because he's, he's trying to tell you there are no roads. <laughs> uh, there are no roads in the wilderness. So he says, I'll, I'll make a road. I make a road, which, 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 tells, which tells me that not only uh, will he be putting a road there, but he's also going to make a means for me to travel through the wilderness. And if you keep your hands, just like I showed you a minute ago, as you go through the wilderness, there'll be times when there'll be some rough terrain, but yet God will say, I told you this year, I'm going to bless you this year. Keep your hands in place. I'm going to let it flow through your hands this year. I'm going to bring past you and bring through you so many things that you've never seen before. Somebody shout this year. I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know what, uh, what God has spoken to you all individually because I believe God does speak to his people, but I, I don't know what God has said to some of you, but I declare, keep your ears open because God's going to use your pastor and those that stand behind this desk to confirm the things he's been saying to you. Oh, I'm having church already. God's going to confirm some things this year. It may not all come through your pastor's lips, but, but, but whoever the pastor stands up here, you ought to open your heart up and say, God, I know that's you because you've spoken to me already. You told me this year will be the year that it will come through my hands. This year, if I seek your face, if I seek your word, if I stay in your word, this year it shall come to pass. Well, let me get through this now because it's something because now you may not see what I'm saying right now, but, 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 but we got we to gotta take the power off. We got to take the limit off uh, a power in our lives. Now, 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 most of us have read this scripture in Matthew 16. Most of us. Uh, now, it's interesting because uh, most of us have, have read this scripture and read this particular story and, and many have assigned this scripture to the starting of the church. But that's not really what was happening here in, in this scripture. Uh, as a matter of fact, but what, what must be understood is Jesus asked a question in the 13th verse that summed up the previous 12 verses. He warned his listeners about mixing man's doctrine with the truth of God's word. He was telling them it was difficult to receive revelation knowledge or understand the will of God if they got hooked up with the wrong people. Y'all remember about maybe three, four years ago, I preached a sermon from this pulpit, pregnant by the wrong person. And some sat there strange, wrinkles in the forehead, trying to figure out where, where Bishop was going with this message. And I took you to Ezra and, 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 and how the people had mingled with the wrong people and married the wrong people. 
and, 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 and had babies by the wrong people, wrong men, wrong meaning those that were not a part of their destiny. They were getting pregnant by the wrong people. That's why, young folk, you got to be careful who you hook up with. Oh, oh, come on, come on. You gotta, I, 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 told my, I told my daughters, and now I tell my granddaughter, everybody's not your friend. Everybody's not your friend. I don't know why. Everything is a friend. That, that's my friend, my friend. Oh, shut up. Is my grandson here today? All right. Oh, shut up. Everybody is not your friend. Oh, bless his name. Sometimes you got to tell folk that are trying to be your friend, no, no, I, I'd rather walk alone right now. Amen. Stop letting, listen, young folk, stop letting people, stop letting your peers push you into stuff that you should not be pushed into. Take a leadership road, road and, stand, and stand the test. And no, I don't do that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm worth more than that. My body is worth, Lord, help me here. My body's worth more than that. Woo. So when you look at this, it's something, it's something because uh, when I look at this scripture, he warned his listeners about mixing, uh, mixing man's doctrine with the truth of God's word. He was telling them it was difficult to receive revelation knowledge or understand the will of God if they got hooked up with the wrong people. He referred to the Pharisees and the Sadducees as leaven. Leaven is something that can keep you from rising. In other words, it modifies the true intent. And what Jesus was saying was the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees was designed to weaken the word of God in their lives. Understand something, the place where Jesus chose to speak from was an area that was saturated with idol worship. My God, my God. And, 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 and this year it's gonna be important that, listen to me young folk especially, that you be bold enough to say no. <laughs> that you be bold enough to say, as I said before, I, I don't do that. I, I don't go there. Lord, this year, this year, you're going to have to be bold. Jesus was, Jesus knew he was in the midst of all these idols. Matter of fact, they worshiped the uh, goddess Pan, P-A-N, during that time. And Jesus picked the wrong place because folk would have knocked him off or assassinated him, assassinated anybody that was blaspheming those things. But Jesus said, wait a minute, it's in the midst of this that I'll start my church. It's in the midst of this. And that's why the church can never go, I feel it today, the church can never go under because we're standing on a rock called Jesus. That's why the church can't go under. That's why the church will stand its ground because we stand on a solid rock. Oh, bless his name. I, I, I told the folk last night, I had to preach last night over in Trenton and, and, and installing a pastor. And, and I said, listen, there's a lot of churches, I had a lot of preachers out here. I said, but you got a lot of, you got a lot that are not authentic. I call them knockoff preachers. Pre, pretenders. <laughs> feed, feeding you junk food. Oh, the only thing about junk food, junk, junk food might fill you, but it won't build you. <laughs> oh, Junk, listen, junk food to do it. I, I gave the example last night. I, I used to love McDonald's cheeseburgers. And I don't know, was it when I, when I got past 30 or 35? Something happened on the inside. <laughs> I don't know if they changed the ingredients, but a McDonald's cheeseburger didn't stay home too long. I ain't going nowhere else, Nisi. I'm standing right there with it. <laughs> something, listen, it's something about aging. In the spirit realm, there's something about growing up in God. Where that some things you used to like, you don't like no more. Oh, bless his name. Now, I must admit, I, I, I got to repent. I got to repent. Because what drives me back to McDonald's are the fries. I get a sandwich somewhere else, but I got to get the fries. Oh, used to be a time when the all two all beef patties 
special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, on a sesame seed bun was the favorite. But I submit to you, when you grow up, somebody say grow up, grow up, grow up. When you start growing up spiritually, your body, your spirit ought to start rejecting. Your spirit ought to start rejecting some stuff. But Jesus stands his ground here in a place saturated with temples that worship Baal. And let me pause here and tell you, listen, God will give you strength to stand the test. Now in Caesarea Philippi, there was a temple of white marble built to the Roman Godhead of Caesarea. But right in the middle of all of this, Jesus stood at the center of Syrian, Greek, and Roman worship and asked the question, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Oh, I like this, I like this. Right in the midst of all those so-called places of worship, Jesus is looking for a people who will take off the restraints. Tell somebody, take off the restraints. This year, you've got to trust God like never before. This year, you've got to put your faith in God like you never, am I preaching anybody yet? This year, you've got to make up your mind, I'm going to stand for Christ no matter what comes my way, no matter what difficulties come, I'm going to stand for the things of Christ. This year, this year. And so Jesus says something, he, uh, uh, it's something because Jesus found somebody who, would, who was not afraid to take off the restraints. The Bible says Peter spoke up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right away, Jesus knew Peter had embraced the future. He said, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but this came from my Father which is in heaven. Oh, bless his name. And when Jesus saw that Peter wasn't afraid of his surroundings, hear me real good, folk. You can't be afraid for what's going on around you. Stop, 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 stop calling our president names. Y'all not gonna help me today. Stop, stop, stop calling him names and, and call him before God. Oh, uh, stop, stop making up names about our president. No matter what you think, he's in there for the next four years. Say what you want to say. So it, it, it might be better for us to hit our knees and begin praying for those that are in leadership. Jesus said, Simon bar Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed it, but my Father which is in heaven. And when Jesus saw that Peter wasn't afraid of his surroundings, Jesus turned around and said, Peter, because you're not afraid, here are the keys. And this year, I'm almost done here now, this year, this year is going to be important that we as a people of God walk around with the keys. And as we approach a situation, approach a son or a daughter who is not walking with God, they'll hear us coming because they'll hear the keys. Look at somebody say, take your keys, take your keys. This year, don't go into any situation without your keys. My God, this morning I left the house, I went out and started my car and started to get it warmed up. And I, and I went back in the house and I didn't realize something. I, I, I didn't know where I set my keys. Now, I know I'm getting older, and sometimes my keys are already in my pocket, but that's not this, this case now. And so I went outside and started the car, came back in, and couldn't find my keys. And so, and my wife said, take mine. I said, no, in my exact words, no, I want my keys. I know you got the keys in the car, but I want my keys. And I walked around the house, uh, stays out. I went in the kitchen, I looked, I went in the dining room, I looked, I went back there, I checked my coat pockets, I checked the po pockets I had on, and still found the keys, and I finally went down, and some said, look down, they were in my desk, I had locked my desk, and they were in the desk. I wanted my keys. Tell somebody, I need my keys. This deliverance this year is not going to come from somebody else's keys. But this year, the Lord said, I'm going to give, I'm preaching now, God said, I'm going to give you the key. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God sent me to tell the church today, take the limit off of him. 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 Whatever you bind, whatever you loose 
shall be bound and shall be loosed in heaven. Take it off of him this year. Make up your mind. Because when I read this scripture and I read the term and the gates of hell, I envision loved ones, sons and daughters, stuck behind a gate. I worked in the prison when I was in college. I, that was my, my night job. I literally worked in the prison. And when you go in for that 12 o'clock shift, they, 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 they're supposed to be asleep. But I remember vividly when the person that was at the desk let you in, hearing that door slam. That's a terrible feel. That's a terrible sound. Clink, clink. And you're in there for eight hours. And I found out you better have a good relationship with them boys. <laughs> but the thing that I also found out was this. The place where they were locked in cells, you could, you could see them because the opening was just enough to see. And that's what I envisioned the gates of hell. We can see ones. We can see sons and see daughters. And God said, I'll give you the key. That key didn't work. That key didn't work. I'll give you the key. And whatever you loose here, he said, I'll loose up there. And whatever you bind here, he says, I'll bind it there. Anybody need something loosed today? Stand, stand with me. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to stop right there. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand with me. Anybody need something loosed? Now, you can keep talking smack if you want to. You can, always, you can keep on talking junk and how strong you are, but here's where the rubber meets the road. Peter got the keys based on a statement he made. Stop. I just, I, I just heard this in my... Stop trying to fight a spiritual battle with your carnal mind. Stop it. It will drive you crazy. This thing is spiritual. You've said all you can say about this in the natural. And it's not like they don't know. The Lord sent me to tell somebody that this thing is spiritual. Peter got these things because Jesus said, what you just said did not come from flesh. Did not come from blood. But it came from my father which is in heaven. He said, Peter said, thou art the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Somebody this year, let me, let me get out of here. This, this year, this year, this year, this year is going to get the right key. <laughs> going to get the right key. Years ago, John, years ago, I, I preached over in Willingboro, Elder Baxter's um, Church of God in Christ over in, in Willingboro. I think, I think where, where you all were, I think it was. And, and I preached, it, it was a choir a anniversary. I remember it vividly. And, and my subject was, the choir gets the right key. And tied in my little bit of knowledge about, about a C and a D and a, and a cliff and a cliff and everything else that comes with music. But the gist of the message was, when the choir gets the key, they'll get the anointing. Saints, when you get the key, the Lord said you, you'll start unlocking loved ones and they'll start getting out one by one. 
coming out one by one. Sometimes they make decisions that, that cause them to go, to, to go roads that you, that you didn't train them or raise them to go. But God said, just be patient. I've protected in, the, in their silliness, in their stupidity, I protected them. Wait a minute, don't say amen yet. Just like I protected you. <laughs> oh, I got to get out of here. <laughs> oh, bless his name, bless his name. This altar, <coughs> excuse me, this altar is, is open for folk that want the key. It's one thing to talk about it. We can read Matthew 16 until we blew in the face. It's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to put it in action now. Does anybody want the key? Maybe your heart's not heavy about your daughter, but mine is. Not only is my heart heavy about my, but my heart is heavy about your daughter. Not only is my heart heavy about my son, but <laughs> my heart's heavy about your son. Because I won't be satisfied until they're all released. I won't stop preaching the message of Jesus Christ until they're all released. Oh, bless his name. Because you and I didn't train them to be incarcerated. We didn't raise them to be incarcerated. I used to hate to go. I used to go with my mother and my two aunts. I had an uncle that was in prison seven years, and they used to go visit him on the weekends, and I, I, I don't know why they took Kenny. I just, I couldn't figure out. I still wonder, why, why, why Nettie and Mary and Vi t and Nancy take me? And just the thought of driving to prison and then going in and, and, and putting all your stuff in, in whatever they had and then them checking your name out and, and sometimes searching you and all this other kind of stuff. My goodness. I made up my mind, Cece, I said, I, I'll never want to go to jail. <laughs> I'll, I'll never want to go to jail. In the spirit realm, you, you got to make up your mind, I, I, I don't ever want to be entangled again. I am wondering now, this altar, this altar, this altar is open for those that want the key that believe that you can get the key. Come on and meet me down here. If you believe that you can get the key, believe that God is speaking to you, saying, listen, I'll give you the keys because what you're confessing is not coming from your flesh. It's coming from your spirit. What you're confessing is not coming out of you. It's coming out of the voice of God. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Simon Barjona, he said, that answer didn't come from flesh and blood. Your response came from my father, which is heaven, and said, and he said, listen, and, and, and since you listen to God, your name is Peter. Petros, your name is Peter, and upon this rock, I'll build my church. Uh, uh, upon your statement, I'll build the church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, bless his name. I don't know about you that remain in your seats, but I declare to you, listen, this year, I'm praying for the blood to cover my house. <laughs> and y'all think I'm just talking about around the corner where I live? No, no, I ain't just talking about that crib. <laughs> because I pastor most of you, then I, I'm talking about your house too. Because I'm just as so much a part of your house, whether you like it or not. You talk about me all the time, so I'm in your house. <laughs> oh, bless his name. I'm praying for your house. Point at somebody and say, I'm praying for your house. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, tell them I'm, I'm praying for your house. Come on, tell them I'm praying for your house. I'm praying that the root of sickness be plucked up out of your house. I'm praying that if there's a spirit in your house, that it be plucked up by the root. I'm praying that deliverance come to your entire family. The brothers and sisters you don't even talk to, don't even relate to. I'm praying for total deliverance for the house. Good God from Zion. Whew, I, I, I thought I was too tired to preach today, but I feel like preaching today. I'm talking about your house. Come on, tell them, your house. Your grandson. <laughs> your granddaughter that's raised in the Christian church and thinks she's a Muslim now. Your daughter. Y'all ain't gonna help me, I hear it in my mind. Your son. Your brother, your sister. I'm praying for the whole house. That's selfish for me to just pray for my house. When I got a sister standing at this altar now, I want to pray for her house. What saddens her, saddens me. <laughs> oh, bless his name. And Jesus said, 